Hello, my name is Lowell Vanderpool and this channel is dedicated to IT students, IT professionals, and anyone who enjoys learning technical subjects. Now when I was an instructor, I, at the end of their Windows courses, all the students had to do a whole series of troubleshooting problems. And I would have about 10 boot related issues. And I would do all kinds of evil things to their computers. Delete their bcd.dat file. I would corrupt one of the five major boot files. I would delete critical files that are needed for the boot. I would do all kinds of things so that Windows would not boot. And they would have to use the WinRE environment to go and troubleshoot them. To my surprise, I put a lot of boot problems in. And often, those PCs should not have booted, and they did. I often would delete three, 400 DLLs out of the System32 folder. That Windows 10 would boot and just amaze me. Now, with that said, you still will have boot problems and you'll still need the recovery environment. When you have the least amount of time, you're under the greatest amount of pressure, that's when you'll have a boot problem and it won't self-heal. Windows RE provides you a whole suite of tools and solutions to get servers, tablets, desktops running again if they've got a boot related failure. So jump in and let's take a look at Windows recovery environment. So typically when we look at our screen, we're going to be seeing something unusual that shouldn't be showing up on the screen, like a blank screen with a flashing cursor. That's not good. Or you're seeing Pixie come up and you know good and well it should be going to a RAID Ray or to the internal hard drive. So here you can see that it's not booting up to the operating system. Many error messages that you see on the screen can give you a real insight as to what actually is the problem. Now, when we see a blue screen of death, that doesn't always mean we're going to have a boot failure, but it does happen occasionally. When we have a blue screen of death, we will also have a corresponding boot failure. If you've been around IT very long, you remember this one. And this is a very common error message showing me my Windows Boot Manager did not start. Typically, this can be bcd.dat. It can be a, a host of things. This error message tells me a lot about what did happen and what did not happen. So let's take a look at Windows Recovery Environment, also known as WinRE. Think of WinRE as the blue screen of life. WinRE is preloaded. When you install Windows 10 for desktop, home, pro, enterprise, education, or Windows Server 2016 and above, Win, WinRE is preloaded as part of the operating system. Since most of us are moving to UEFI, you will see the partition here. It's about a 499 megabyte partition that's reserved for WinRE. This is a location where your boot files and tools are located. The WinRE partition has no drive letter assigned. Microsoft does not want users in that partition. Inside that partition, it has a WinRE WIM and drivers. The foundation for Windows Recovery is the WinPE based operating system. This is a very small version of Windows. The WinRE is the interface, the menu system, repair and recovery options. One of the frustrating things about Windows RE is there's about six user-initiated actions that should get you into Windows Recovery. I went to six different computers in, in an enterprise environment where every image was exactly the same. And out of those six user-initiated methods of getting into Windows RE, every one of them would have something that was missing. This would not have this feature. This one would not have, could not use this function. It was really challenging. So make sure you download the video notes if you find that the actions that I'm going to share with you don't work on your PC. It's not you. 
it's Windows. Go to my desktop. I'm going to hit the power button, hold the shift key down, and then restart. Now this is getting into Win Windows RE from Windows. This will give us options that we do not have when we boot up from a flash drive and go into Win Windows RE. So just be aware, based on how you go into Windows RE, you may or may not have some of the options that you expect. Now every time you go into Windows RE from Windows, not from a bootable flash drive or a CD-ROM, but from Windows, you don't actually go into Windows RE. Let me show you. Here I'm in Windows. I'm going to come down here and type CMD and launch it as an administrator. Say yes. Come over here. And I'm going to type in what you really go into. It's called boot im.exe. Voila! So you actually go into this special interface that looks and smells and acts like WinRE, but it's not. Now, once you choose an option in here, then it will actually reboot and you'll go into WinRE. Pretty cool. Now, let's go back to WinRE. We're here in troubleshooting. We get a lot of options here. We get command prompt, startup settings, startup repair, uninstall updates. Here we can see we can go into the UEFI firmware settings. Takes us right into our firmware. System restore. We even have more recovery. This is system image recovery. Allows you to restore from a backup. Accessing WinRE from Windows, we have more options than any other method. Startup settings gives you the option of booting Windows and a VGA driver. Debugging mode, boot logging safe mode, disable driver signature. Another way to get to WinRE is through settings. I'm going to go to all settings and I'm going to update and security and under recovery I should have advanced startup. Now I have probably three PCs in my office and two out of three do not have that option. So that's another way you can start your PC in WinRE. Now Microsoft has designed Windows so certain failures will automatically move you from Windows into Windows RE. WinRE automatically starts after detecting any of the following. Two consecutive failed attempts to start Windows. Two consecutive unexpected shutdowns that occur with about two minutes of boot completion. Two consecutive system reboots within two minutes of boot completion. A secure boot error or a bit locker error on touch only devices. You will automatically go into WinRE. Now some features of WinRE are only available with UEFI. So in your boot options, there's an option that says use a device that's UEFI only or access the firmware menu that's UEFI only. So let's choose use this device. Remember, this is only available in WinRE. And we have three options, EFI SCSI, EFI network, and EFI SCSI device. I could find nothing in Microsoft documentation that referred to these options. Now, if you access WinRE from Windows and you open any boot option, any tool, it will prompt you for a username and password with local admin rights. By default, networking is disabled in WinRE, but you can turn it on if you need it. WinRE allows you to access the command line with admin privileges. You can reset the PC. You can restore from backup if you have backups. You can restore the registry using System Restore. You can repair the operating system through the command prompt using DISM or SFC. You can run check disk. There's a wealth of powerful tools at the command prompt. Okay, if you have one of these, WinRE is not going to help you. The command prompt at WinRE is incredibly powerful. We're going to run a validation against system files using the FFC forward slash scan now. It's just going to check all of our system files. We can also run check this to validate our file system. And if there's any errors, it will fix them. That's what our slash F is. You can also use the registry editor. You can copy files. You can uninstall updates. Startup Repair is the only automated tool in the suite of tools in Windows Recovery Environment. It basically runs up to three times. My experience that after it runs two times, hasn't fixed the problem, it's not going to fix the problem. You have System Restore with Windows Recovery, which allows you to take your registry and take it back in time. Only if you have turned on System Restore on the PC. I've used this, I can't tell you how many times, to get a non-functioning PC back up and running. If you choose System Restore, it's an involved process and can take between 3 and 10 minutes. Remember, System Restore is about taking your registry and moving it back in time to a different state. System Restore can impact applications that you have installed. Again, System Restore takes some time, so don't be impatient. Let it finish its work. 
I am still using today Windows 7 Backup, which allows you to use this feature called System Image Recovery. I can recover from a dead hard drive and never skip a beat. If you use System Image Restore, you must have backups, generally on external hard drives. So I'm logging on, and here you would point it to where your backups are. You can uninstall updates, both quality, which are primarily security fixes, and feature updates. WinRE gives you the option of uninstalling both security updates and feature updates. We're going to uninstall some security updates. We'll log on. Now this takes a long time. I'm actually speeding this up 25 times faster than it is. So if you're looking for a quick one, this one's not. You can also uninstall feature updates. Startup settings allow you to boot windows in a variety of options. A favorite feature of users is the ability to reset this PC. You can choose the option of keeping my files and apps, and that's Windows Store apps, not apps that you download from the internet and install. You can also choose to reset the PC and keep my files, but not any of the Windows Store apps. And then you can reset this PC and remove everything. You're going to give your PC to your niece or nephew. You can also choose to enable data erasure. It takes longer to prepare the hard drive, but it's one way to get rid of all your personal information. Now, if you have BitLocker, you're going to need your BitLocker recovery key if you use WinRE. An interesting fact about Windows RE is it runs entirely from memory. Now, there's a couple lesser known ways of accessing WinRE. One of them is using a command prompt, an administrative command prompt, and typing in reagent C forward slash boot or. Once you do that, then you'll have to restart the, the operating system and you'll boot into Windows RE. So in Windows, we'll start a command prompt with elevated credentials, reagent C forward slash boot tor, and then we'll do shutdown forward slash R forward slash T, and boom. Another way is, again, command prompt with administrative rights, and you can do shutdown forward slash R forward slash O. Now I use both of these methods on a virtual machine. Neither one would work. Went to my industrial workstation behind me, and it, both of them worked. So that's the kind of inconsistency that you'll see. You want an elevated command prompt, shutdown forward slash R forward slash O. If you don't put the forward slash T0, it, you'll have to wait for a minute. So just add the T0 and it will reboot right away and right into Windows Recovery. Now there are things you can't do with Windows RE and they're basically a limitation of Windows PE, the base operating system. You can't use it for a file server or a terminal server. You can't join Windows PE or Windows RE to a network domain. You can't connect from an IP4 to an IP6 network. You can't use remote desktop. You can't install applications. If you're trying to boot from a path that contains non-English characters, it won't work. And you're limited by the base operating system. So if you've got a 32-bit version of Windows PE, obviously you can't run any 64-bit apps, etc. You can't add bundled apps through DISM. If you want to customize WinRE, you can. There's a variety, and there's listed here, optional components that you can add to Windows RE if your environment desires that. One way to play and learn a little bit is download the Windows Assessment and Deployment Kit, ADK, for Windows 10. When you launch the setup, you'll get a menu that looks like this, and you can just choose Windows Pre-Installed Environment, Windows PE, and it you can select whatever component you want, but if you just want to focus on Windows PE, you can just check that box and it will install what you need for Windows PE. Once it is installed, you can go to Program Files x86 and down, look under Windows Kits until you find Assessment and Deployment Kit and you'll see the Windows pre-installed environment. And in there will be a WIM, 64-bit WIM, and a 32-bit WIM for WinPE. Here at Tech Savvy Productions, we've created a number of videos to help both new students, new help desk employees, and IT professionals at any level to better understand how to troubleshoot Windows. This particular video, Windows Startup Failure, takes you from firmware up to Windows and it follows what's known as the boot chain. You can't troubleshoot what you don't understand. If you don't understand each step of the process that Windows takes to boot, you can't troubleshoot it. This video has PowerPoints and video notes, free download under video description. 
Both Windows 10 and Server can boot about six different ways. But if you don't know those six different ways and how to leverage those for your particular problem, they're of no value to you. Take a look at this video, PC Startup Will Not Boot. It really focuses on startup settings and why you would want to select certain ways to boot Windows or your server versus others. Remember those six ways to get in the recovery environment? This video was specifically to help you navigate the frustration of getting into Windows recovery. Check it out if you need it. Now, if you're trying to get into Windows recovery and you've got Secure Boot turned on in your UEFI BIOS, it won't work. You'll need to go in and disable Secure Boot. So if you're not real familiar with Secure Boot, check out our video on Secure Boot and Windows. Windows 10. Need a review of UEFI? We also have a video on UEFI that pertains to Windows 10. I just finished a series on how to build bootable flash drives using Rufus. This is one of our latest videos that we've done, and this is rescuing data when Windows will not boot. And it shows you ways of getting data off a, a PC tablet or laptop, getting that data safely off before you start repairing it. Thank mm -hmm. you.